Edvo Tech Tips. What happens if I make the wrong percentage agarose gel? Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Danielle Snowflack and I am a scientist at Edvotech. Today we're going to be discussing a common question that we receive about our DNA electrophoresis experiments, and that is, what happens if I make and use the wrong percentage agarose gel? Electrophoresis is a biotechnology technique that can be used to separate dyes, proteins, and nucleic acid like DNA and RNA. Because of its ease of use and its ability to separate different molecules, electrophoresis has become one of the most common techniques used in the research laboratory. Electrophoresis uses electricity and a porous gel matrix to separate mixtures of molecules into discrete zones or bands based on the physical properties of the molecule. This includes a molecule's charge, its shape, and its size. One step that's easy to overlook is the preparation of the agarose gel. Agarose is a long chain of simple sugar molecules, or polysaccharide, which is purified from seaweed. When prepared correctly, the agarose acts like a strainer, or sieve, helping us to separate molecules by size. In our kits, we sent agarose to you as a white powder in a small plastic vial. It's pre-measured and the mass is noted on the label for reference. To make our gel, we measure out the correct mass of agarose powder, add it to the electrophoresis buffer, and then dissolve it by boiling using a hot plate or microwave. The melted agarose is poured into a mold and allowed to cool before performing the experiment. For most of our ready to load experiments, we recommend a 0.8% gel. While a cast agarose gel looks and feels like a solid, at the molecular level, it is full of tiny holes or pores. The pores influence the way that DNA travels through the gel. As the current is pushing the DNA fragments through the gel, they must find their way through these pores. Since it's easier for small molecules to fit through the pores than larger ones, the DNA separates into bands by size. The size of the pores in the gel change based on the percentage of agarose in the gel. Higher percentage gels have smaller pores and lower percentage gels have larger pores. This means that larger fragments are gonna separate better in low percentage gels because they fit through the channels better. Whereas smaller fragments separate better in high percentage gels because it's smaller channels slow their movement. Higher percentage agarose gels do take a bit longer to run, which makes sense because the tunnels through the gel are smaller. But if we had a mixture of small DNA fragments, we might choose to use a high percentage gel to get better resolution between the bands. So when choosing a gel percentage for our experiments, we balance resolution with speed. So here's the fun part. Let's try the experiment. What happens if I run the same DNA fragments on a high percentage agarose gel and a low percentage agarose gel? So here's our experiment. I'm gonna be running the same DNA samples through two different gels. The top gel is going to be 0.8% agarose, and the bottom gel is going to be 2% agarose. I'm going to place the prepared agarose gels into the electrophoresis chambers and then cover them with buffer. The DNA samples I'm using today are from Edvotech Kit 135 using CRISPR to treat cystic fibrosis, which are in our quick strip format. They're already aliquoted and ready to use, which makes for easy pre-lab prep. I'm loading the prepared DNA samples into our gel using an adjustable volume micropipette, which allows us to measure very small volumes of liquid. You'll notice I use the pipette tip to puncture the foil of the quick strip before loading the sample. I also switch the pipette tip between each sample to prevent cross-contamination. Once we have completed loading our gels, we're gonna place the cover on our electrophoresis chamber, attach the leads, and turn on the electricity. The samples migrate through the gels, where they separate into bands based on size. Once the gels are done running, we're going to take them out of the electrophoresis chamber and analyze them using the True Blue 2, our white and blue light transilluminator. First, we're going to use the white light feature to look at the dye migration through our gels. The tracking dye in each DNA sample lets us estimate how far our smallest DNA fragments travel through the gel. What you can see is that the percent gel influences the migration of the dye through the gel. It travels much further in the 0.8% gel than it does through the 2% gel. So let's analyze the migration of our DNA through our 0.8 and our 2% gels. Starting with the latter, we can see that the top band, which is the largest piece of DNA in the latter, is closer to the wells in the 2% gel. Bands of the same size moved further through the wells in the 0.8% gel, and samples with two DNA bands separated further from one another in the 0.8% gels. Looking at the gels as a whole, we can see that the bands are closer to the wells in the 2% gel than in the 0.8% gel. 
So through our experiment today, we showed that the percentage of agarose in your gel does affect the way that DNA fragments run through the gel. We can still analyze the results even if we use the wrong percentage gel. But for best results, be sure to balance the resolution of the gel, that is how well it separates specific DNA fragments, with the speed with which you can perform the experiment. Thanks for joining me today. We at Edvotech pride ourselves on providing the highest quality customer service for our teachers. Call, email, or send us a message on social media.